It's common knowledge that Antarctica is the planet's coldest, driest and iciest region. Although the frozen continent of Antarctica may appear featureless from above, beneath the ice is a mysterious and intricate world that, according to researchers, may hold the key to understanding how climate change is affecting the planet. It is now known that the Antarctic ice sheet has been losing bulk quickly. The ice sheet's glaciers are melting six times more quickly now than they were 40 years ago as a result of the rising ocean temperatures. According to NASA, Antarctica is currently losing 252 gigatons of ice yearly, which is the equivalent to three and a half Olympic swimming pools per second. Within a decade, the Antarctic ice shelf could crack, raising sea levels by several feet. But what is generating the anomalies that the Antarctic continent is going through? And how will they affect us? Let's find out. The majority of the Antarctic area is made up of the continent of Antarctica. The Antarctic Convergence encompasses the Antarctic, a chilly, inaccessible region of the Southern Hemisphere. The icy, northward-flowing Antarctic waters and the warmer waters of the world's oceans meet at the Antarctic Convergence, an irregular line of latitude. The Southern Hemisphere is around 20% covered by the Antarctic. In terms of the overall area, Antarctica is the fifth largest continent. It is bigger than Oceania and Europe combined. The absence of a local population makes Antarctica a distinctive continent. The region is dominated by the Antarctic Ice Sheet. It is the single largest piece of ice known to exist. When snow and ice are at their worst, this ice sheet even extends outside the continent. From roughly 3 million square kilometers, that's 1.2 million square miles, at the end of summer to about 19 million square kilometers, that's 7.3 million square miles by winter, the ice surface expands dramatically. The Ross Ice Shelf and the Ron Ice Shelf are the two coastal ice shelves where ice sheet expansion largely takes place. Ice shelves are connected to the land by sheets of floating ice. These lower elevation ice shelves receive glacial ice at rates of 10 to 1,000 meters per year from the interior of the continent. The Antarctic region is crucial to the processes that shape the entire planet's climate. It is crucial to the Earth's overall thermal balance. The ratio between the amount of solar heat absorbed by Earth's atmosphere and the amount of heat reflected back into space is known as the heat balance, sometimes known as the energy balance. Compared to other continents, Antarctica plays a bigger part in regulating the planet's thermal balance. In comparison to land or water, ice is more reflective. Large amounts of solar radiation are reflected off the Earth's surface by the enormous Antarctic ice sheet. The amount of reflection off the Earth's surface reduces as the amount of global ice cover, ice sheets and glaciers, diminishes. This enables the Earth's surface to absorb more solar energy, leading to an imbalanced heat balance that contributes to the current phase of climate change, global warming. Interestingly, NASA researchers have discovered that more ice is now forming in some regions of Antarctica as a result of climate change. They claim that the new climate patterns brought on by climate change are to blame for this. The polar vortex is a powerful wind pattern that is produced by these processes. The strength of the polar vortex winds, which reduce Antarctic temperatures by as much as 15% since 1980, has increased in recent years. However, not all of the Antarctic is having this effect, as some areas are seeing ice melt. The ocean conveyor belt a global system in which water travels across the world based on density and currents is largely made up of the waters surrounding Antarctica. The Antarctic bottom water, a body of frigid seas that surrounds Antarctica, is so thick that it presses up against the sea floor. The warmer waters rise or upwell as a result of the Antarctic bottom water. Because of how powerful it is, the Antarctic upwelling contributes to global water circulation. The powerful winds that circle Antarctica help with its migration. The oceans surrounding Antarctica are essential to the effective and balanced circulation of Earth's waters. Scientists have warned that an Antarctic ice shelf could split 
and collapse over the next 10 years, allowing a glacier the size of Florida to slip into the ocean and increase sea levels by feet. According to Erin Pettit, an expert on the dynamics of glaciers and ice sheets at Oregon State University, a major chain reaction in the ice might start with the Thwaites Glacier by 2031. Within five years, a portion of the shelf may be destroyed by large fissures in the floating ice of Antarctica's massive Thwaites Glacier, a fast-melting feature that has become an icon of climate change. If that occurs, the glacier could release an armada of icebergs and start flowing into the ocean much faster. This would channel ice that had been resting on land into the sea, where it would contribute to sea level rise. Thwaites had previously been thought to be a relatively stable area. Scientists have been closely monitoring changes in the Thwaites Glacier, which already loses about 50 billion tonnes of ice annually and contributes 4% to the rise in sea level for decades. The eastern ice shelf of Thwaites has lately been shown to have deep moving cracks. Over the past few years, they have been visible in satellite pictures and their expansion appears to be accelerating. The eastern ice shelf, which is atop an underwater mountain and is melting, keeps the glacier, a river of moving ice, from sliding into the ocean. According to the study, the ice at the top of the shelf has recently developed fissures that are moving as swiftly as 2 kilometers, that's 1.24 miles, a year into its center. Thwaites empties into the Southern Ocean after leaving the Antarctic continent. It is the widest glacier in the world, measuring 120 kilometers across. Ice flows into the ocean rather swiftly across around two thirds of that area. The eastern ice shelf, where ice had been flowing more slowly, makes up the remaining third. The ice grinds to a halt when it encounters an undersea mountain, which is located around 40 kilometers offshore, contributing to this. The submerged mountain acts as a cork in a bottle containing the flow of ice. Scientists identified a zigzag pattern as the most likely location for the ice shelf to fracture and melt. According to Ted Scambos, a senior research scientist at the Cooperative Institute for Research in Environmental Sciences and a collaborator in the study, Thwaites is the widest glacier in the world and has doubled its outflow speed within the previous 30 years. The glacier lost 14 billion tons of ice, as evidenced by a six mile long and 1,000 foot deep crater that was found beneath it in 2019. Later that year, scientists analyzed aerial photographs of Antarctica from the 1970s with recent radar data, and they discovered Thwaites was melting far more quickly than they had anticipated. The majority of West Antarctica's ice would be carried away if Thwaites collapsed. Consequently, it is imperative to gain a better understanding of how the glacier will behave over the next 100 years. Satellite radar imagery over the past few years has revealed numerous new fissures developing in the Thwaites. Several kilometers each year are being covered by the fissures as they spread through the ice. They are moving towards weaker and thinner ice where they might speed up and cause this section of the ice shelf to melt away within five years. The British Antarctic Survey estimates that Thwaites is responsible for 4% of the annual rise in sea level. However, if the shelf gives way, that percentage can increase to 25%. If the Thwaites Glacier completely melted, it would raise sea levels by two feet. But if it caused other adjacent glaciers also to melt, the sea level might rise by up to 10 feet globally. Since several factors can affect how ice shelves crumble, it is unclear exactly how the changes may occur. These factors include the speed at which warm water melts the glacier's floating portion's bottom and the geometry of how ice, land and water interact. The floating portion of Thwaites is caused by ocean tides to rise at high tide and fall at low tide, according to a recent discovery made by the team. The glacier flexes further upstream as a result of that up and down tidal pumping that has long been suspected but rarely been specifically observed. 
This includes the area where the glacier flows off the land and into the water. Because of this flexing, warm water may be able to penetrate beneath the glacier more easily, according to seismic and radar data. The presence of these structures and their potential rapid creation may have an impact on the ice shelf's long-term stability. It's disconcerting to see this massive ice shelf approach at a speed of nearly a mile per year. Additionally, one lone glacier is huge enough to have a considerable impact on the sea level. On the other hand, this year, a massive iceberg that was roughly one and a half times the size of Greater Paris detached from the Brunt ice shelf in Antarctica. The Copernicus Sentinel-1 mission has recently taken new radar photos that show the 1,270 square kilometer iceberg breaking free and moving quickly away from the floating ice shelf. Glaciologists have been closely observing the numerous fissures and chasms that have developed in Brunt Ice Shelf's 150 metre thickness during the past few years. A fresh crack was discovered in the ice shelf north of the McDonald Ice Rumples in late 2019 and it appeared to be moving toward another significant crack close to the Stancombe Wills Glacier Tongue. Satellite images showed that this most recent fracture was swiftly cutting across the ice shelf, so it was carefully watched. Sentinel-1 data on recent ice surface velocity showed that the area north of the new fissure was the most unstable, moving about 5 meters per day. The newer crack then rapidly spread in the early hours of the break-off before finally breaking free from the rest of the floating ice shelf. Moving on. Scientists have also found a previously unidentified ecosystem hiding in an underground river that runs a third of a mile beneath an Antarctic ice sheet. A camera was lowered into the cave by the New Zealand scientific team after they had drilled through the ice shelf. They only initially noticed hazy particles that appeared to be debris drifting about. It was quickly captured on camera and revealed to be live crabs. As the camera dropped into the river, hundreds of amphipods, small shrimp-like crustaceans, swarmed it. They found dozens of different living forms thriving on a small area of the seafloor deep beneath Antarctica's ice shelves, an astonishing degree of animal variety for a place that has never seen sunshine. Life can exist deep beneath the Antarctic ice, protected from the sun's stimulating rays, although it was believed to be uncommon. Such dark realms shouldn't have enough food to support a diversity of life, as most ecosystems are supported by photosynthetic organisms like plants or algae. What lurks beneath the ice shelves, which occupy 600,000 square miles, that's 1.6 million square kilometers of the ocean, may very well be the least explored underwater environment on Earth. This unexpected finding of so much life existing in such harsh settings serves as a reminder of the exceptional nature of Antarctic marine life. Finding such a diverse array of life beneath the persistent ice sheet is one thing, but explaining why it exists is quite another. Because they consume algae which requires sunlight, and because they were thought to be too delicate for the savage 28 degrees Fahrenheit, that's minus 2.2 degrees Celsius temperatures. Marine life, especially filter feeders like bryozoans, sponges and jellyfish should, in theory, become scarcer with distance from the open sea. The truth is that these animals are actually preying on microscopic organisms like ciliates and dinoflagellates, which are being carried by ocean currents beneath the ice shelf. The communities that live on the seafloor beneath the polar continental shelf in ice-free water are not constrained by a lack of food. They receive far more than they could ever consume, and they don't consume a lot. These are animals that adhere to the ground and don't have large bodies filled with tissues that require a lot of energy. They can therefore live off the meagre amount of food that does reach them. Furthermore, carbon dating shows that these bottom dwellers are not recent residents of the ice shelves beneath Antarctica. Only 20 of the hundreds of shards have been dated despite the fact that the oldest remnants date back 5,800 years. This projection could very possibly be further in the past, based on future data. 
Whatever its age, it's certain that life has persisted here in close proximity to isolation for millennia. The species diversity of the ecosystem may be explained by this absence of disturbance. Storms, floods and fires don't occur below the ice, allowing all species that can endure the time and stability necessary to radiate to every open niche. However, pristine environments like this could be among the first to disappear due to climate change driven by humans. These distinctive habitats risk disappearing as the Antarctic ice shelves melt. Furthermore, once lost, the ecosystem is irretrievably lost. Undoubtedly, the discovery is spectacular. Nobody anticipated finding any form of life there, much less a hidden planet beneath Antarctica, and this discovery proved that there is a massive ecology beneath the ice. Therefore, it makes sense why the discovery was so unexpected. The discovery of the hidden world under Antarctica was made at the Ross Ice Shelf. It is the biggest ice shelf in the world and has served as the subject of several studies over the years. According to experts, the structure that contains a complete ecology of amphipods was accidentally discovered. In order to better understand the various climatic scenarios that can affect the Ross Sea, scientists set out to collect data. Instead, they left having uncovered a world and environment that were before unknown. It's an amazing accomplishment that ideally will help to further illuminate this icy and enigmatic region of the Earth. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click that video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.